Canada, uh, Dimitri, obviously has this this cloud hanging over them about the big ice. They can't win on the big ice at the Olympics. For 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 Russians' entry, it seemed the big sticking point is the KHLers, and are they good enough? Now we know that that Radula is part of that. We know that uh, Svitov, Kovalchuk's part of that. So the, there's some quality guys in there, but how much of a hindrance is this mandate that they wanted to go with a, a lot of KHLers? Well, it is a hindrance, but at the same time, the bigger hindrance, in my opinion, is the defense. So the Russians are resorted to uh, you know, emphasizing their offense, putting a lot of pressure on guys like Barlamov and Bobrovsky, and sort of you know, playing these high-scoring games almost, you know, hoping that they can score uh, you know, one more than the opposition. Um, the KHL guys, as you mentioned, Radulov, Kalchuk, and no Kalchuk, I mean, really that good this season. He probably was slumping. You know, he also missed six games through an injury. And, uh, you know, I wonder how, what it's going to be like for him. But I think the bigger sort of the Achilles heel of this team is the defense. When you when you talk about defense, the, does a guy in his mid-30s who's had two major surgeries on his knee have to be their best guy, Markov, or is somebody going to have to emerge here? No, he has to be uh, the main guy. I mean, who else is going to emerge from this group? You know, the two KHL defensemen that were sort of paired together at the last leg of the Euro Hockey Tour in late December, they completely failed at the tournament, and now they sort of were taken apart and, and you know, probably hoping to compensate for their shortcomings by playing with the NHL. But at the same time, Marco is the only guy. He used to be Sergey Gonchar, you know, quarterbacking and power playing, being the lead uh, when it comes to the defense. But now it's Andrei Markov, so it's all resting on his shoulders. So, Bobrovsky and I mean Bobrovsky makes Tutin and Nikolin, Nikitin or whatever the heck his name is, Nikitin look okay in Columbus. I mean, is their goaltending going to make up for this, this sort of un, you know underskilled defense? They're going to have to, and I think you know, in my opinion, they're going to go with someone like Barlamov to do that, and. Um, you know, with, uh, with having Alexander Semin and Alex Ovechkin re- reuniting on the first line, you have Varlamov in goal. He may recall the golden days of Washington where it was all run and gone offense uh, with virtually no defense. So and Varlamov managed to, kept, uh, to keep them in it. So uh, I think the three are sort of looking into it, uh, going like, hey, it's just a good old day. You're giving it to Varlamov ahead of Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky just went 15-2, and two, I think, in his last 17 games, and you're giving it to Varlamov? Uh, it's not me. It's sort of dating back all the way to the IHF World Championships in Moscow, and, and from then on, you know, when Varlamov was just drafted, I think he was always nurtured to be the number one. Even when Bobrovsky won the Vesna, I kept saying, ah, it's still Varlamov's job to lose. Again, both will play in the preliminary round, but I think... Uh, Barlamo's got this advantage just simply because throughout the years he was he was pumpered as this number one goal, goalie for, for Sochi, and I think you know the the the, the stubbornness of the coach uh, and this coach is really stubborn uh, may just you know may just play in Barlamo's favor. Hey Dimitri, in 2010 we saw Canada get off to a, a slow start, and we we spoke about pressure and expectations of playing in front of your home country. On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you put Russia's pressure and expectations on their hockey team? Well, it's really up there. I mean, think about this. Canada you know, winning gold on, on home soil. Uh, but think about the Russians. The last time they won, uh, it wasn't even a country. They didn't even have a flag. They, they, they played under the Olympic flag, right, in 1992. Uh, and it is the first time ever that the Russians are gonna actually going to host uh, the Winter Olympics. Uh, you have guys like Malkin and, and Ovechkin in their prime, you know, and there's already the pressure's on them. The pressure's been on them from seven years ago, and it's, I think I think it's it's even tougher to compare the pressure that Team Russia is under to what Canada was under. Another, and because objectively, a lot of fans think that the Russians don't have the strongest team in the tournament, yet the pressure is to actually win gold. And if they can win any medal, any one medal, only one medal, this would be it. The pressure is tremendous. Uh, D- Dimitri, you know, you see Put- Putin around and, you know, he's hugging the figure skaters and the bobsledders and whoever else wins. I mean, 
imagine what he what what kind what of he, hug the players would get. Well, I mean, just want... the, I mean, it's all they talk about is winning the hockey, winning the hockey. It's bizarre. And then I look at this team, and I'm thinking, are they even as good as Finland and Sweden? Yeah, you're right. I mean, nobody's talking about the team like Sweden, and in my mind, they're actually they may be the favorites. Uh, they have the skill, and you know they can play on big ice. And again, uh, they have mature, sort of experienced players who can really perform. Playing against Finland, uh, you know what? Those guys, if they go one goal up, try to score against them, try to equalize, because those guys get behind the puck and they will defend. You oh, know, the uh, with a goaltending school, you know, it's it, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why people aren't talking about those teams because maybe it's good for them because the pressure is off of them. But I think Sweden may be actually the favorite of the tournament. When you when you look at a guy like Pavel Datsuk, even if he had one leg coming into this tournament, you get the sense that he he still would have to play. Uh, absolutely, uh, this is something that he wanted to do for a long time. Uh, I I remember I talked to him a few years ago when Detroit kept making the the, the, the playoffs and the Stanley Cup and and the Stanley Cup finals and and making the finals and and going deep in the playoffs. I said, well, you, you know, what, what is your biggest regret? And his biggest regret at the time was that he never won anything for his country. So uh, since then, he played in the world championships, etc. But this is the big one for him. You know, since the age of 12, he refused to be a captain of any team. And I'm sure Detroit went, you know, sort of at least talked to him about it when Nicholas Ritson retired. He didn't want that. And this, uh, he accepted the honor. He, he would play no matter what. It is Russia win a pool with Slovakia, Slovenia, and Team USA. Uh, you're heading over tomorrow. Safe, uh, safe travels. Yes. Who's he picking to win? Oh, you're picking Russia, right? To, oh, I, I really want Russia to win. I'm just, uh, I, I just like Team Sweden to be honest yeah. with you. I have Sweden so you're beating like Russia. Millard. You're going against your homeland. Yeah, I picked uh, Canada to finish fifth, and I have uh, Sweden and, and Russia in the gold medal game. He's, so he's got this defense ahead of Canada. Hey, Dimitri, when you're at the airport going through customs, don't say yeah. you pick Sweden. I'm just giving you a little tip. I, uh, hey, I'm trying to. <laughs> be, you know, there's a guy I'm Snowden. You may end up with him if you're not careful. <laughs> uh, thanks for doing this, and uh, please be safe. Safe travels. Thanks so much, gentlemen.